Imagine the dream SMP. But it's ten times better. Look for each other. You want to be a hero, Tommy? There's no like one! If so, it has to turn communist. You ask why? The answer is chaos. Let me explain. The reason the Dream SMP was so popular were its chaotic storylines enhanced by chaotic streamers reigned over by chaotic politics. Although this chaos has been slowly lost due to a lack of interest in the newer storylines by both the audience and the members, the Communist Revolution can serve as an inspiration for a great, chaotic and full of emotions season 2. So let me tell you the story that will make the Dream SMP viral once again. Ok, the season starts. We still have the same power structures as season 1. Tommy and Turbo are still arguably the most important people in the political landscape. But with Technoblade gone, Rim and Sapna become the best PvPers of the server. Rim needs to acquire the political power from Tommy and Turbo and his best way to do so is through a charismatic, politically influential person who would betray Tommy and Turbo for what he thinks is the greater good. Rim would need to do some serious convincing though because Wilbur is not on the best terms with him right now. After Rim convinces Wilbur, revolution begins. Wilbur starts asking people if they want to be part of their revolution but surprisingly they kinda don't. No one truly wants there to be more country problems. Everyone has their own factions and are fighting their own wars against everyone else and they also don't fully trust Wilbur's ability to lead a country. But Dream and Wilbur come up with a great solution. Wait for a while until their country making plans are forgotten, invite every important person they can to a networking party to plan some future alliances between already existing countries but leave Tommy and Turbo out of it. They tell everyone right before the party begins that Tommy and Turbo suspiciously pulled out at the last minute and that they might not like the idea for the countries allying against their so-called oppression. The least powerful people are told to go ahead whilst the most powerful including Wilbur and Dream stay behind. And as everyone closes in on the meeting place, boom, the people in front die due to a TNT explosion, whilst those in the back are severely injured. This is the high class Minecraft version of Bloody Sunday, orchestrated by Dream and Wilbur. Those who survived are convinced that this was Tommy's doing to prevent any alliances against him. Those left are furious and they will take revenge for an attempt on their lives, but Dream has a better idea to get the sweet, sweet power. He's planning on doing a non-violent takeover on the political landscape while being in the shadows. He pitches Wilbur an idea of a siege on Tommy and Tabo's house houses for a later takeover when they are weak. Wilbur presents this idea to his allies and they reluctantly agree for the same reason that you don't like this so far. Where is the violence here? Where is the fun? You ask. Don't worry, Dream enjoys that as much as you do so it's also got that planned. Violence will eventually come. At the time of the siege, Dream and Wilbur volunteer to do most of the hard work including the whole siege aspect but for that they need weapons. A lot of weapons. All of the allies happily provide said weapons as they have to do minimal work to get revenge on Tommy and Tebow who are still trying to explain that they had no involvement in the meeting attacks. After some days of siege, Tommy and Tebow grow quite weak as they cannot go out to collect any resources due to fear of being killed by Dream and his allies. Tebow relies on diplomacy and asks Dream for his list of requirements for this siege to end and Dream's answer is clear. I want to see white flags! White flags outside your base by tomorrow at dawn or you are dead! Tommy refuses to give up but Turbo reminds him that they have no other option so reluctantly they open the doors and show Dream a white flag. And that's where the violence comes up. Dream and his allies enter Tommy's house and aim at Turbo. Dream asks Tommy for his discs or Turbo dies. Tommy ends up agreeing under the pressure and gives up his discs to save Turbo. Dream simply laughs and kills Turbo and Tommy all as Wilbur watches his betrayal to become the most powerful person in the server once again. Before Wilbur can start opposing Dream, Dream accuses him of being a traitor. Because of his well known friendship with both Tommy and Turbo, he's the main suspect of the meeting attacks but had driven attention away from himself and was planning to kill Dream when the right time came to usurp all of the power. Wilbur watches in awe as Dream points a crossbow at him and shoots. Dream's plan is going perfectly but there's still one last thing to solidify him as the king of the server. He convinces all of the others that to avoid such attacks from happening in the future they should create some sort of alliance, an alliance where everyone around them works the same amount and gets protection and goods from the government. Dream starts this as an alliance between different governments but slowly convinces all of the governments to become part of one big empire as it would be more efficient. But each government would still act independently of course, we don't want to strip you of your freedoms. They would simply answer to Dream for security purposes. Once this organization is created, Dream slowly takes out each of the leaders, becoming the absolute leader of the new Union of Socialist Republics of the Dream SMP. Now the only hope for the people of the SMP is an alliance between Wilbur, Sirt, Tommy, Turbo and whoever decides to join them after Dream's complete takeover of the server. So if you want to know a way for them to defeat Dream and regain their beloved discs and of course the power they once had, then like and subscribe for the next video.